Hi, this is Xavier Eichrin Coder, and I'm really happy to read another excerpt to you from my father's biography book that I co-wrote with Mark Victor Hansen, Reverend Ike, An Extraordinary Life. And one of the extraordinary gifts that my father expressed in the world was healing. And I chose this one because the world needs healing. And I believe that as we read this book and get an idea of some of the powerful things that he accomplished, this book can actually function as a self-improvement manual. In other words, you're not just reading about somebody. You'll be inspired to take on some of the same powers and and energy and success that he was able to do, but in your own way. And so we need to be the healers in this world right now. And so I believe this excerpt will inspire you to step up to your healing power. This is from the chapter called Supernatural Miracles and Healings. There was a deep mystical essence to Reverend Ike that many people missed particularly as he became more famous and flamboyant. Glitz and glamour aside, from his early years of ministry, it became apparent that he possessed an undeniable quality that some might call a supernatural healing ability. As he explored the phenomena more deeply, he discovered through his own work in the realm of healings that the miraculous healing abilities of Jesus and the apostles as told in the Bible chapter of Acts was not limited to a short time in history 2,000 years ago, but could be activated by passionate believers who recognized that with God, all things are possible. He had firsthand experience with events that defied any explanation in the natural world. His uncommon connection to the divine and the spiritual healing anointing born from that consciousness is the very thing that started to draw tremendous notoriety throughout South Carolina and launched his meteoric career as a preacher. In the early days of his pastorship, it was his ability to do extraordinary supernatural healings that caught everyone's attention. He gained a reputation for healing conditions which were seemingly impossible to heal. Life-threatening disease, life-destroying conditions like tuberculosis, alcoholism, drug abuse, cancer, crippled limbs, stroke, deafness, blindness, deformed lungs, and broken hearts were being healed and done away with permanently after an immersive experience in the spiritual vortex created at Reverend Ike's healing meetings and revivals. His lead vocalist at the time, who he called Star Cleo, recalled those days fondly. At night, our team was preaching up, teaching up, singing up, and healing up a storm. Reverend Ike told them healing would come from within, with their faith. He looked into each of their eyes and seemed like he could see their soul and the healthy divine person within their sick and diseased bodies. He'd lay his hands on each person that came through the prayer and healing line. He used God power and presence to wake up the spirit in people. Individuals who'd been sitting in wheelchairs for years felt his healing touch and heard him proclaim for all, God in you can walk. And people would get up and walk. People hobbled in on crutches and he told them, drop the crutches and walk to me. And they did. He could see the God in each of them and he expected them to exercise the power of God in them with faith. People threw away a lot of crutches, canes, and walking sticks. Reverend Ike's studies taught him that everyone latently has healing potential that God gave them. He woke them up to the presence of God's healing power and potential. Most individuals have never been asked to use their intrinsic God-given gifts of healing themselves and others. Reverend Ike got the audience to be of one collective healing mind. Together, they generated amazing life-giving vivacity using the presence of God that became a united, collective healing force. He created, cultivated, and curated an atmosphere of healing energy that everyone got swept up into, and it worked. The undeniable testimonies during each service proved it. 
The ministry expanded in proportion to how successful he was at convincing people they had to be part of their own healing. Listen, it takes more than a prayer from me, he would say. You've got to change your mind first. You've got to help me do something here. I'm praying, yes, but you've got to do something as well. He encouraged healing and asked the audience to participate in sending healing energy to every other attendee that needed and wanted it. He also asked them to accept and be open to healings if they were in need. He literally changed their mental and spiritual state of consciousness. Between the powerful music and his new message of personal power through God, Reverend Ike set up the conditions to make miracles happen. He created an atmosphere of many attendees that melded into one coherent and unified mind and heart. He held that image of the person in his mind, in his heart, and in his knowing. He saw the truth in them. This invited the person in need of healing to raise their personal resonance and personal consciousness to that level, provided it was congruent with their highest good to have the healing manifested. He was able to hold on to the will of the person's own higher self, and if they were ready, boom! Together they touched the hem of the garment of the Almighty and were made whole. No one can resist the virtue issuing forth from the Christ nature, the divine force within the healer and the one being healed, once their soul accepts it. Skipping ahead here a little bit to one of the many accounts of healing uh, in the later years at the United Palace. A homeless lady wearing tattered clothing rolled into church in a wheelchair one Sunday. She waited in the healing prayer line and when it was her turn, she said she was poor and didn't have a place to live. The reverend and the congregation prayed for her. Let me hear everybody say, the healing is already happening. The healing is already happening. Now, just you folks over there in the special healing section, I want you to yell up here at me and say, my healing is happening right now. Let's hear it. My healing is happening right now. Turn and shout it to the congregation. Shout it now. My healing is happening right now. When God rises in you, all of your sickness, all of your enemies, everything that comes against you just breaks up and breaks down and flees away into its native nothingness. So come on, let's do what the word says. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. The following Sunday, the woman showed up again and she'd had a complete transformation. She walked in, the wheelchair was gone, she was nicely dressed, and when it came time, she gave her testimony. She told of how God and Reverend Ike healed and transformed her. Having heard Rev. Ike, she changed her thinking, her mind, her soul, her body. She had gotten out of the wheelchair, found a job, and went back to work. She was happier, she announced loudly and proudly, than she had been in years. It was breathtaking to witness, and the audience gave her a standing ovation. So I hope you've enjoyed this excerpt from Reverend Ike, An Extraordinary Life of Influence. <laughs> it's available for pre-order right now at Amazon. Uh, and on December 19th, they will ship, or you'll be able to download it, depending on which version you get. And regarding these healings, I have personally witness these things happen. People coming in in wheelchairs, getting up, walking out. People coming in with canes and crutches and throwing them away. They used to hang them on the wall at the United Palace and there was literally banks of all kinds of implements like that. And um, yeah, my dad definitely worked that healing power. And I want to encourage each one of us as we read this book, we can assume that consciousness of healing that's within us. The key to it, his secret weapon, or his secret sauce with healing was understanding that the power of God existed within him and within the one who needed to heal. And when they came together and agreed on it, that power worked miracles. So thank you, hope you enjoyed this and I'll be back with some more excerpts soon. Peace. <laughs>